I'm on Facebook. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. And we are live. Hello. Welcome to Quest Day 13. Lies that we believe. And um, just to begin, I want to begin by reading John 14, 15 through 18. And I'm going to read in the Amplified Bible. And it says, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, to be with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive and take to its heart, because it does not see him or know him. But you know him, because he, the Holy Spirit, remains in you continually and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless, bereaved, and helpless. I will come back to you. And Jesus tells us that he's not going to leave us as orphans. And yet so many people, and so many people in the church, um, they haven't reached the fullness of this truth, or the fullness of their identity, who they are in Christ. And so we walk around, right? believing these lies and these limiting beliefs because many times there is an orphan spirit um, a root that is attached to that that you know begins with heart wounds and traumas things from our past many times it begins in our childhood and you know these roots they're so deep many times that it requires progressive healing to actually be able to uproot the original root all right and so just because you've dealt with issues in the past related to some of these wounds and traumas right it does not mean that you have found the root and that it's been uprooted and so you will have points in your flesh where you get aggravated or you get offensive in relation to that area and when that happens that's how you know that there's still a root there's still more healing that needs to take place or you know the Lord is still working in that area inside of you refining and purifying and so I'm gonna give you a personal example because you know I was out on my own very young before I was 16 and um, my father was never really in the picture my mom worked all the time all the time I rarely saw her, but when I did, she was always tired, frustrated, aggravated, or angry. Um, and so I just, I grew up in a very toxic and abusive environment, right? And my stepfather was emotionally and physically abusive. And my mom usually ended up, you know, blaming that on me. His behavior was my fault because, you know, I must have done something to aggravate him or... I must have been misbehaving and yet I grew up with this mentality that I deserved that treatment because that was what was being spoken over me even though in my spirit deep down I knew that that wasn't true it still took root it took root in my mind it took root in my heart and um, because I grew up in that extremely dysfunctional environment there were so many roots so many roots and I had been through processes of healing with the father where he had identified um, things in my past and took me through experiences and touched my heart and healed me in those places and so because I had reconciled with my mom through the years and we had a good relationship I didn't believe that you know I had any any roots associated with my mother hey good morning Susie and so, you know, fast forward many years later, here I am an adult with my own children, and um, I'm still struggling with some of these wounds and traumas because I haven't really identified what the core root was. And the, and the Lord had been good and healed me in many of those places and had removed a lot of that dysfunction. However, there was one root that I just couldn't seem to figure out. And so I went through this Sozo session with somebody that I know. And in this session, you know, as she's talking and she's like, you know, Jesus is gonna show you an image or, you know, speak to you 
give you a memory about a time that he wants to heal, that he wants to, you know, take you deeper into. And so I all of a sudden had a flash of my mother's face and I was shocked because I, I didn't believe that I had any wounds left related to my mom. I didn't believe that there was any trauma left. I thought I had dealt with all of that. And we were in a good place in our relationship. And so I was really surprised. And as he took me further, right, in this encounter, in this healing encounter, um, I also saw my not so ex at the time, but I saw him and I was like, what is, what is he doing in this scenario? And so, you know, in asking the Holy Spirit to reveal what was going on, what I realized is that I had unforgiveness in myself related to areas where I had tolerated uh, treatment that I shouldn't have or where, you know, I had treated him poorly and I shouldn't have. And so that unforgiveness was part of a greater root, but it was what was keeping me stuck and what was keeping me bound and why I couldn't get past this repetitive cycle where I would, I would be okay for so long and then I would just it was like I would trip and fall on my face and stand up and wonder what, what happened because there was nothing that I could see in my way. I had, a, I had a blind spot, a couple of them. And so the Lord is so good because in that experience, he took those roots. He took the pain. He took the memories. He took all the junk associated with those roots and those memories and he replaced it with peace. And I realized later that he replaced it with himself because he is the prince of peace and so he took that stuff away from me and he covered me with his blood and he released his truth over me for my life revealing to me my worthiness and my position as a child of the most high god and as sitting next to him on the throne right and so it was such a beautiful an amazing experience but I didn't even realize I needed it I had a blind spot I couldn't see because I was stuck behind a veil I was stuck behind some limiting beliefs and some limiting mindsets that were attached to a root of abandonment and rejection from my youth from my childhood related to my mother and so many times you know people do not want to do these inner healing sessions or they do not want to walk into an area with the Lord where he wants to refine and purify because there's pain associated with it and so when he is prompting us to deal with these areas or whether there's an area where you have an offense built up or, or, or something that just causes you to cry out of nowhere and sometimes uncontrollably there's a root attached to that and the Lord wants you to heal it. And the only way you're going to be able to get healing is to allow him to take you back through that experience. And you need to give him that root. You need to give him that memory, give him that experience, give him that trauma, whatever it is, so that he can replace it with his truth for you, with his gift for you. Because the Lord doesn't ask us to give us something that he doesn't want to replace with something even better, right? And so a lot of times we avoid those places because human nature does not like pain. So human nature will go above and beyond to avoid any kind of pain, right? And that's why so many people will be stuck in addiction or, you know, stuck in a wounded place because they don't want to deal with the pain. They don't want to face it. And so they try to escape it or they try to avoid it. Or, you know, there are these blind spots that we have that we sometimes don't recognize why we're experiencing these things. But when we surrender that and we hand it over to the Lord and we allow him to fully penetrate our mind, then we can be healed then we can be set free and then we will see the truth that will set us free and the truth is always the spirit of the lord he will reveal to us what we need to know to be free from the roots and the traumas and the heart wounds because 
we need to be able to get past that to go where he wants to take us. We don't want to be functioning from a root of offense or prophesying from a wounded place because we want to prophesy the true word of the Lord from his spirit, from his truth, not from our own, not from a place of woundedness. And there are many people out there that are prophesying and that are speaking over people from a place of rejection, from a place of abandonment, from a place of hurt, from a place of judgment because of their experience or experiences in life and they haven't been healed. So it is so important that we allow the Lord to take us through those processes and to remove the lies that we believe, to replace the limiting beliefs that we have. And so it is um, something else that I wanted to share in relation to my experience when I, I had that healing session is the very next day I had a dream. And in this dream, um, I realized something about the cycle that I was in with my ex and how dysfunctional it was. And I woke up that very morning and I said, enough is enough. Enough is enough. And that healing, that finally, because I had gotten to the root, broke the cycle. And so I was now able to see clearly what I wasn't able to see before because the Lord touched me and he pulled that out and he replaced it with his truth, right? His eyes, his mouth, his heart and soul. And so it was so wonderful <laughs> on the other side of that to be able to experience that freedom that I didn't even realize that I needed. And so I carried that stuff with me for years, struggling and tripping over it and falling on my face and having to pull myself back up, not even realizing that I needed to deal with it. So that's how good the Lord is, is he knows when to deal with something, how to deal with something and how to show us what we need to do and where we need to surrender so that we can get past those lies that we believe. Because the enemy uses those roots that we have from heart wounds and traumas to plant the lies. He plants lies in our mind. And, you know, many times throughout my life, looking back now, I can identify the difference between the voices, between my voice, between the Lord's voice, between the enemy's voice, because there's a different accent to it. That's the best way that I can explain it to you. And, you know, the enemy's voice with me was always full of guilt, condemnation, and shame. That's what he used to try to keep me bound and stuck there. And so it would play over and over in my mind like a broken record because I had those lies. I had those wounds, those darts that I needed to pull out to be free. And so those wounds and those traumas, those darts and lies that we believe they prevent us from seeing ourselves fully as he sees us. And, you know, he sees us as beloved and righteous because we are covered with the blood of Jesus. And so many of you have probably heard me share this because I've shared this in multiple places on multiple platforms. Um, but experts estimate that we have between 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts each day. But of those thoughts, only 5% of them are new thoughts. And so we wonder why people get stuck in these patterns and in these cycles and why they can't break free. Well, it's because those lies are replaying in their mind. Those iniquities that they're bound in and those lies that they believe keep them stuck in that place, right? Like I was stuck in that place, in that cycle, because I didn't see the truth. I couldn't see the truth because there was a root, there was a wound. And so we have this filter in our mind that is filtering through the wrong lens. And so until we allow the Lord to renew our minds, you know, we're not going to walk in the fullness that we should be walking in, that he desires that we walk in. And there are so many scriptures about the mind in the Bible. And I've actually studied on this a little bit. And I did this um, for one of my courses in my Freedom to Flourish, which is an inner healing course and program. And so one of the ones that, that caught my attention right away was where the Lord says, you shall, well, actually Jesus says, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. 
and that's repeated in Matthew 22, 37, Mark 12, 29, and 30, and Luke 10, 27. In Deuteronomy 6, 5 is very similar, except that it says to love the Lord with all your strength. And so in order to love the Lord fully, we need a renewed mind because the carnal mind is not able to love the Lord in that way. And so in order to renew our minds, we need to remove the lies and the limitations and the things that we've believed that are not true. And so being delivered from heart wounds and traumas is a critical part of this process. You have to remove the root to be able to see clearly. So I want to share with you in Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, it says you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, right? The carnal desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, right? When we accept Jesus into our hearts, we become a new creation, but it doesn't happen instantly. We have to take the steps. We have to follow Jesus on the path to healing, to the new creation, to a renewed mindset. And so the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and true holiness. And if you go through, you want to go through and read this yourself, Ephesians 4, 22 through 32, and it gives you the different ways that we can achieve this. And so, for example, verse 25 says, therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully, right? And there's such wisdom that it goes on in those scriptures to help us see how we need to live our lives to overcome the carnal nature, to overcome our flesh. In Hebrews 12, 1 says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And in order to be able to throw these things off that hinder us, we need to allow the Lord to work in the process. We need to seek the Lord for the truth that we have to replace those lies with. And so I want to do an activation. And so Lord, I just invite you in. Holy Spirit, come into the atmosphere and speak to those under the sound of my voice and show them a root that you want to heal, that you want to uproot and replace with your truth for their life. Give them an image. Give them a memory. Give them a sound or a smell. Give them something personal that will take them to the place that you want to touch, that you want to remove that belief and that lie. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you speak and you show and guide what your truth is in relation to that lie. Allow them to see you in this memory, if it's a memory. Allow them to sense you around them in this moment that they might be taken back to right now, Father. And I ask you to show them your truth. Reveal your truth related to what this root is. And allow the Lord to show you. Allow the Lord to reveal to you what the root is and what he wants to replace it with. And sit there and bask in the presence with the Holy Spirit and allow him to speak to you as I close out here. Father, I thank you and I praise you for all that you're doing in our lives. I thank you and I praise you for the gift of Jesus and the blood of Jesus that washes us and cleanses us from the lies that we believe. And we accept your truth because you give good, good gifts. Gifts to bring us into the fullness of who we are and who we're called to be. And so I bless you all with this encounter with the Lord. I bless you with his spirit and his peace and his comfort right now to show you what you need to know to be set free in an area of your life. And so I bless you. I pray the Lord continues to speak to you today and give you deeper revelations of all the love that he feels for you. See you soon. Bye.